we're going to be using heat transfer vinyl to put a design on one of Kai's shirts. I'm using one of the ones that we used in tie-dye. He wanted several designs. This one he decided he wanted a stretching cat that we found on Cricut Design Space. It is part of Cricut Access. Off camera, I measured Kai's chest to see what would look right and seven inches was pretty much perfect. This is my second time using HTV. The first time I tried both a cutting board and a ceramic tile behind the fabric. I liked the results of this uh, ceramic tile a little bit better, but the cutting board was a lot more user friendly than the ceramic tile. The ceramic tile was hard to readjust and to move around and of course it got hot and it was just kind of a pain. Um, so I decided to use a cutting board this time to start with. I do have a ceramic tile sitting on standby waiting for me just in case I need to use it though. Any time that I'm doing any kind of measurements like this, I find that it is easiest for me if I kind of sketch it out to give myself a visualization of where everything's going. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just marking out that it's seven inches across that I want it and then I will measure the shirt itself to see how big the shirt is and make sure that everything will fit and then center the seven inches on there. After marking the middle, I'm also making a straight edge on there. Um, however, the pattern on the shirt isn't quite even, so I don't want to keep it too, too straight. 
Earlier, you may have noticed that I did not do a mirror image on the cat. That was purposeful because I wanted the tail to be covering that uh, little spot up there that looks an awful lot like a skull to me. I spent quite a bit of time fiddling with it and readjusting it and trying to make it just to the, my liking and deciding that where I had it to begin with was where I really liked it. Then I turned it upside down so that the camera had a better angle than I did and decided that it looked really crooked. <laughs> So I fiddled with it some more. I'm using an old, old, old iron to put on my HTV. And I am lucky enough to have a heat sensor at my disposal so I measured the temperature of this iron I found that it gets really really hot hotter than uh, the suggested temperatures for iron on is you know if you go to the um, Cricut website for the everyday iron on it just says turn it to the hot setting but then on other sites it talks about 315 to 330. I found out that my hot highest setting is more like 475. And so I tried it at 315 at first. I did end up turning it up just a little bit from that. So it ended up being closer to 340 or so. I followed the instructions much more closely this time and heated the fabric up before I applied the uh, HTV. And I'm using parchment paper instead of the plain, plain cloth or the pressing cloth. I am pushing on each area around 30 seconds with all of my weight. The video that you're watching is sped up by about two and a half. At this point I was going to go ahead and heat up the back of the fabric but I found that a piece very easily lifted when um, I so much as bent the shirt so I went ahead and put it back on the cutting board to press that area a little bit more. And then I repressed the rest of it just to make sure. At this point, I kind of felt like my iron wasn't quite hot enough, but I wanted to go ahead and go through with it just following the directions. Rather than trying to go through the effort of 
turning this shirt inside out and risking it, you know, getting weird, I decided to go ahead and do the back press through both layers of, sh of the shirt. So I'm very carefully peeling the backing off, making sure that each new piece that's revealed doesn't come up with the backing. And at this point I was really lucky enough that nothing did come up. I thought I was in the gold. When I was able to look at it more closely though, I noticed that you could see all of the fiber markings through the HTV everywhere except for on the cat's rump where it sticks up. So there on the whisker it's good, it's good on the legs, it's just not good on the butt where it sticks up. I wasn't sure if it would work, but I remember reading somewhere where you could reapply the plastic backing and reapply the iron, so I th figured I'd give it a try. This time I did decide to put down the ceramic tile to give it a little bit more bounce back from the heat on the bottom. I felt like that worked really well. I did turn up the iron at this point to about 340 as well. At this point I noticed that I'd gotten a piece of hair trapped under the plastic backing that left an imprint in the HTV so I decided not to use it again and just laid the parchment paper over the design. As you can see it didn't stick to the parchment paper, it worked really well just doing it just like that. And here you can see that there are several small circles where the steam holes in the iron uh, did not get moved enough and the HTV did not stick as well. You cannot see the fiber markings through it. It's still pretty flat. I decided to go ahead and use a ceramic tile again, repress it in that one spot. It worked really well last time, it just didn't um, move it around enough. And that last time was the charm. And here you can see a very nice extreme close-up of what the HTV should look like when it is well pressed with the fiber showing through. <laughs> 